Jacob and his family returned to the land of Canaan, where his father Isaac and brother Esau were living with their families. During the journey home, God appeared to Jacob and blessed him and said, Your name is Jacob. You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So God called Jacob Israel, and then God said, I am God Almighty. You will have many sons and daughters, and nations and kings shall come from you. This gave Jacob great comfort, knowing that God would be with him as he returned home after being gone for many years. After his return, Jacob did just as God said and had many children. He had twelve sons that worked the land and took care of all his animals, for by now Jacob was very wealthy in livestock and possessions. One son, Joseph, stood out above all the rest. He was very wise and could be trusted with every job or responsibility that his father Jacob gave him. For this reason, Jacob decided to give him a beautiful coat of many colors. This showed Joseph's brothers that he would be the one to receive the birthright and be responsible for the entire family after Jacob's death. Sadly, His brothers hated him for this and could not say one kind word about him. Then Joseph had a dream one night, but when he told his brothers the dream, they hated him even more. He told them, Brothers, listen to the dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose straight up and your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to me. His brothers angrily replied, Do you really think you are going to reign over us and rule us? Then Joseph had another dream, and this time he told his father, Israel, and his brothers the dream. In this dream, he told them that this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to him. When Joseph's father heard this, he got on to Joseph and said, What is this dream you had, and why do you think your mother and I and all your brothers would ever bow down to the ground before you? Even though his father was unhappy about the dream, he kept it in his mind. After these two dreams, Joseph's brothers became jealous and angry towards him and disliked him even more. One day, all the brothers had taken their father's flocks to some land to graze far away. Jacob asked Joseph to go check on his brothers and the flocks and bring word back to him. Joseph put on his coat of many colors that showed he was the most trusted and wise among the brothers and set off to find them. He found his brothers in a field far from home, grazing the animals. When they saw him in the distance, their anger and jealousy was so great that they began plotting to kill him. Here comes that dreamer. Let's kill him, throw him into a deep well, and then we can tell father that a ferocious animal killed and devoured him. Father will never suspect us. But his brother, Reuben, had a kind heart and convinced the brothers not to kill him. Instead, they stripped Joseph's coat off and threw him into an empty and dry well in the hot desert. As they all sat down to eat a meal, a caravan of Ishmaelite merchants came towards them, loaded down with goods on their way to sell in Egypt. Joseph's older brother, Judah, said to the other brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelite merchants and not lay a hand on him. After all, he is our brother our own flesh and blood. They quickly pulled Joseph up out of the well and sold him as a slave to the merchants for twenty shekels of silver. Then the merchants went on their way to Egypt, taking Joseph prisoner to sell as a slave. 
Even though Joseph was stunned and hurt over what his brothers had done, he was also greatly relieved to be alive and continued to believe that God would take care of him. The brothers who had kept Joseph's beautiful coat of many colors then killed a goat and dipped the coat into the blood. When they returned and showed their father the coat that was covered in blood, Jacob was beside himself with grief. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but his grief over losing Joseph was so great that he told them he would take his pain and grief to his grave. <laughs> 